poetry and fiction and finding some sort of connection in that and it's writing that stuff the importance of doing all of this is that it does it matters to somebody at some point somebody who's needing to hear somebody wrestle with their demons with their with their depression with their struggles to hear that somebody else has those problems too sometimes that's all that anyone needs and to make that connection and you're like yeah okay this does suck this is horrible but you get through it and you do you dust yourself off and pick yourself up and you know you uh you have a day where you are going through some things and feeling like you're getting, I don't know, that you're putting yourself out there and getting rejected in a profound way. And you have to have the ability to unapologetically be yourself. You know, sometimes you know, there's no exception to that. There's for some people, a lot of them being their self themselves is, uh, involves a lot of wrong mindedness, but that's, I don't know. I think we all deserve that in some way. And, uh, you know, I don't know. (laughs) Last week I went and saw a fantastic performance, Calexico, Iron and Wine, great, like transcendent stuff. And, um, there's, and was walking back you know, I, I went and walked to a bar and, and had a, a couple drinks and was starting to like kind of relax a little bit and then was walking back to my car and I stepped off of the sidewalk and straight down onto like a, a three inch screw. Um, Luckily, it didn't go very deep. It was just a surface thing. It's fine. It's already healed up. Um, but it's like, really? And sometimes life is like that. And that's just... That's just what it is. And then, you know, these are those... I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to leave with this because I sort of, I feel unfairly and sort of cryptically with the first episode back from the hiatus, um, talked about just feeling like a raw nerve. Um, and that's still kind of true. I think that I've learned. There's a few things as I get older, defense mechanisms that I've put in place to sort of protect myself and to, um, you know, whatever walls and so forth, et cetera, et cetera, whatever metaphor you want to use, they don't work for very long. And you have to actually address things and work through them or you never learn how to really function. And so when you start to strip that stuff away, like I feel I have, then you do, you just feel raw and vulnerable and everything hits heavier than, you know, I've always been a a pretty stoic individual, you know, to the point where it could be viewed as kind of cold and uncaring Um, and now, you know, I find myself, uh, crying basically, 
way more often than I used to. Things hit me on a, on a deep level for, I'll be listening to a song and it'll just get me and, or I'll be watching a film and there being a part where, you know, the kids talking about being, needing to be who he is and be accepted for who he is. And, um, I think it's just going to be the way it is for a little while, while, um, while I'm figuring things out and I'm just kind of accepting that. Um, and I keep thinking about how I couldn't. I couldn't show that, you know, it's, it's been coincidentally when I first began listening to Springsteen was right after I'd seen my dad for the last time. So this is going to nearly 30 years at this point. It's like 26 years now. And, um, I still have that voice in the back of my head that is my dad, you know, being abusive if I were to show any sort of negative emotion. And that, you know, once, once you've had that, it informs, it informs everything. You know, the way we're treated as children, the people who who are supposed to take care of us and sort of put us on the path, you know, they inform how we deal with things. And it's our responsibility as we get older, I guess, to unlearn all of that awfulness, to identify the the impact that that has on you and how it informs how you deal with people, how you, how you manage your relationships, how, or, or mismanage your relationships, which is something that I've done, how you become, develop self-destructive behaviors, which is what I have done and to work to unravel and undo all of that so that you can hopefully, before it's too late, become a more of a complete represent, you know, I, I don't know, become more of a complete person, become more whole to be able to enjoy life, to be able to have meaningful relationships where you can be who you are, or I can be who I am, and the other person can be who they are. And you're just two people existing together rather than subconsciously looking to fulfill some sort of need. Cause that just, <sighs> that is, is that never fucking works. No one other person is going to, uh, you know, fix everything. And when you put that kind of responsibility on that person, especially if you're like me and you just don't actually talk about it and address things, then you're absolutely setting yourself up for failure. And so now, you know, I, uh, I guess part of that is, is being able to be alone with yourself and with your thoughts and learn how to deal with them. And I'm trying to do that now. And that's it. Sorry to be so heavy, but also not sorry.
That's the point, right? <laughs> uh. So, as I mentioned, uh, it's, I had the opportunity to have just like I had a half hour window where I could talk to to Grizz Folk as they were, you know, uh, getting ready for their show at the at the Rebel Lounge last month. Um, I was happy to have that opportunity. They were great guys. Um, we talked about, about the music and band dynamics and stuff I enjoy talking about. I love talking to musicians. Their, uh, their latest album just came out within the last month. It's called Rarest of Birds. Uh, they're not on active tour so much right now, but they are doing a couple of festival shows. They're going to be uh, this coming Saturday, August 31st. They're going to be at Live on the Green. Uh, and then they are on September 13th going to be at the Cabo Del Mar Festival in Del Mar, California. So if you if you have plans to go to either one of those festivals, you should be sure to check them out. Um, they have a, a pretty pretty cool sound. Um, I liked uh, the new album and uh, what I had heard from it. And so let's get into my conversation with the guys from Grisfolk. I'll talk to you just a little bit on the other side. How far into this tour are you guys? Are you just starting out? Or? Um, we played our first show yesterday in Los Angeles at the Troubadour. Troubadour is great. Uh, you know, obviously, super storied venue. Have you guys played there before? Yes. Uh, I think that's th- that was our fourth time, right? Fourth time at the Troubadour? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, third time. Yeah. Third time. Right. Okay. So true. Um, LA is kind of base for you guys, right? Uh, yeah, most of us live in LA. Uh, Adam lives in Nashville. Nashville. Recently moved there. Um, how does that? Well, because you guys have one. Um, Frederick is from Sweden, right? So, and I'm from Sweden. And so you're yeah. from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how does that? Are you guys transplants? How did you? You have like no accent. So. Uh, yeah, I, um, <laughs> I was born in Sweden, but I grew up in LA. And then I moved to Sweden. So I lived like half my life in Sweden, half my life in LA. So okay. kind of disappeared. Gotcha. But I can talk like this if you want. Well, it's, hey, it's <laughs> up to you. Um, how did the band come together? How did you guys all meet? Uh, we met in Los Angeles. Uh, we kind of all moved there for our own reasons and, and met on the music scene okay. out there. Um, Adam and myself were playing in a band. And then uh, at the same time, Adam was writing some songs with Frederick and Sebastian. Um, and one of the songs, the first song that those guys wrote was The Struggle. Um, and then that kind of got released a little bit early by a buddy of ours, Brandon, who runs a blog called The Burning Ear. Hmm. Um, but it was a, you know, it was great, obviously, because it kind of got the Grizz Folk name out there. Although it wasn't called Grizz Folk at that time. <laughs> it was called Grizz Adams. Um, and then sort of forced us to... Uh, merged the two projects together and formed the band. So Grizz Adams is that uh, was that after Grizzly Adams? Yeah. Is that a <laughs> yeah. Adam, uh, our singer, had a pretty long beard at the time. Um, so seeing as his nickname or gotcha. his name is Adam, we nicknamed him Grizz Adams. And uh, and for listeners, Adam is here in the room, but his voice is scratchy, and I'm sure you're saving it for tonight as much Hi. as possible. Is yeah, I'm, the, uh, I'm just trying to say guys, we had a we had a wild one last night. Gotcha. Well, it wasn't wild. It was just there's a, in LA we had sort of like a hometown, so we have to say hi to everyone, you know. Sure, it's really nice. Well, but, the new album just came out yesterday, right? Yeah, it just came out yesterday. It's called Rarest of Birds. Mm-hmm. Um, we we've, we've been working on it. It's been a while since we put out a record. I say three years or so. It's been about three years. Yeah, um, we've been through a bunch of a bunch of things since then. You know. Um, personally and just together um so it's it feels really good to to uh to know that it's out now last night we actually um we had a relief party a relief party yeah instead of instead (laughs) Instead of of a a release release. party yeah okay (laughs) that was actually was that your idea um (laughs) yeah anyways um yeah we're just really happy that it's out and that people can hear it now we've been working on it for a long time Gotcha. So the tour kickoff was kind of yesterday then. Um, and how long are you guys on the road? 